If you're anything like me, then you've been in the market for a new gravel bike recently. And there are so many options out there from buying off of Marketplace secondhand to the top end retailers. There's a lot of good options. And today I'm gonna to go over one of them, which I ended up buying for my girlfriend and I, and that is the Salsa Journeyer. Specifically, the variant that I got my girlfriend and I is the 700C Claris group set from Shimano. Now, there are a lot of reasons why I chose this bike and group set specifically, but I'll be putting that in a buyer's guide video after this review. Stay tuned for that and subscribe so you don't miss it. So without further ado, let's get into the review of the Salsa Journeyer 700C Claris. If you're just interested in what you need to know before you buy this bike, you can skip to the time card down here. All right, let's get into the technical specifications of the Salsa Journeyer. The frame is made from 6061 T6 aluminum with an aluminum fork that accommodates tires up to 50 millimeters in width. The frame also allows for internal cable routing and even has provisions for a dropper post. Once again, the group set is a Shimano Claris with a 11 to 34 tooth eight speed in the rear and a 46 and 30 tooth crank set in the front. The brakes themselves are from Tektro with a Shimano center lock disc brake rotor. The drop handlebars are Salsa's own cowbell handlebars. The default saddle is from WTB as their Volt Medium, which is 142 millimeters in width and 265 millimeters in length. The Salsa Journeyer frame is also bike packing ready with tons of mounts on the frame, the down tube, the underside of the frame too, and has mounting provisions for a rear rack and panniers in the rear and panniers in the front as well. The TerraVail tires offer a lot of comfort at 38 millimeters in width, but they do come with Presta valves, so be prepared for that. As a whole, I think this bike is really well designed. I think it offers a lot of versatility. I've had this bike for about a month and a half and I've primarily used it to commute to work through the city, but I've also used it on bike paths and sidewalks, on single track and on gravel roads and crushed limestone bicycle paths. Now the components and the performance of them are just fine for a thousand dollars, but what really was awesome was that I was able to get these on sale for just $850 a piece before tax. After tax, that's about a savings of $400 for the pair of them. And that really made a big difference for me. It made it a really easy choice to buy these bikes specifically and not go the used bike route like on Facebook Marketplace where I might have to compromise on some of the durability and the components or size of the frame, for example. Getting them on sale on May 1st every year through REI or through your local bike shop is a really good deal. And I would encourage you to try and find those deals where you can. And if you're looking for a new bike next spring, maybe keep this on your radar, see if it goes on sale again. It really should, I think. May 1st is generally the time that this occurs and it makes it a really worthwhile bike. That said, here's what you really need to know about this bike if you're going to buy it for yourself. Number one, this is a drop bar bike. If you've never ridden a drop bar bike before, it might take some getting used to. And especially using the brakes and shifting, that's a new experience for some. It can be a little bit difficult, but look up a YouTube video tutorial and it's pretty easy once you start riding, you can get the hang of it rather quickly. Number two, this bike does not have any suspension on it. Basically the only shock absorption you're gonna have is the tires and how you've inflated them to what pressure can play a huge role in the vibration dampening of your ride. If you want a little bit of a smoother, softer experience, you can lower the tire pressure a little bit and have that vibration eaten up a little bit just by the tires themselves. And if you are on a sidewalk or a road where there's not a lot of vibration, you can raise the tire pressure to gain some of that efficiency and speed back. Number three, this bike is a disc brake bike. And if you've never used disc brakes before, they can be a bit of adjustment from your traditional rim brakes that are typically a rubber pad. Now, there are squeaking issues with rim brakes and rubber pads as they age, but disc brakes are a little bit more finicky when you buy them new yourself. You have to burn them in and match the brake pad and the brake rotor together in such a way that they do not squeak. 
If you are city biking, this is a little bit more of a concern, especially for me, because I had to stop frequently and often and oftentimes hard. Uh, and that's not something you wanna do on new disc brakes because you score the rotor, you deposit material in one spot, and so you get eccentricities and vibration, and they end up squeaking a lot more than they should for being a brand new system. The key thing to remember there is to brake smoothly, use your front brake first, and then initiate the rear brake to the level that you need for braking. And also you can fix this somewhat easily. All you need is a bit of sandpaper to take your wheel off of your bike and sand the rotor and sand the brake pads down so that there is fresh material and you can try burning in those brakes once again. I would highly recommend looking up a YouTube tutorial about how to do that for yourself if you're going to need that. The fourth thing you need to know is how your drivetrain works. This Claris is a two by drivetrain where you need to know how to shift your gears properly and anticipate shifting. You can get a one by setup in other variants of this bike, and that might be a little bit easier to understand for the beginner cyclist. Uh, I specifically wanted my girlfriend to know how to use a two by bicycle because in my view, the two by bicycle is more efficient. It has more gear levels and a larger range, so you can have an easier time or you can go a little bit faster. And so I wanted to get us the same powertrain. And so we both got the Claris version of that bike. And it has been a little bit of an adjustment for her, just learning how to use both shifters and how to shift the bike properly and anticipate shifting. The fifth thing is that the saddle is a kind of generic starting saddle. It's good for your avid cyclist who has gotten used to that type of saddle. If you're a new cyclist, it is a little bit thin on the padding side. You're gonna need some time to adjust and allow your body to kind of build up your resistance to that kind of saddle. Um, for me, it's perfectly comfortable. For Hannah, uh, someone who's a little bit wider, has bigger hips, she prefers a larger saddle with more padding and more comfort to it. And we've investigated some options and I think we're gonna swap some of the saddles that we have on other bikes to her bike in the future. Another thing to consider is that this is the 700C version of this bike. It does come in 650B, which is generally considered to be a more versatile tire with more padding, more comfort, a little bit easier time starting up and accelerating. There are some advantages to having a 700C tire, including a little bit more of a top end speed, which I prefer, and a little bit less weight perhaps, although it's it kind of depends on how you set it up. And it does come with Presta valves instead of Schrader valves, which can be a little bit of a learning curve. You might need a special bike pump in order to use Presta valves and fill them up with air. Although you can buy a conversion kit, it's just a little piece for Presta to Schrader and use your old bike pumps that run off of Schrader. I think the last thing to say is that this is a gravel bike. It is not a mountain bike. The handlebars do not offer as much control. You have to be comfortable with your brake grip and it doesn't have any suspension on it. So if you're gonna run on single track, go a little bit slower, be a little safer, wear a helmet, maybe wear extra padding. Just be mindful that a lot of single track, especially here in Michigan, is very narrow with a lot of trees. So using a gravel bike for single track isn't always the best option. Although that said, you can always replace the pedals with a little bit more grippy pedals so that you can get a little more and better control over the bike. Overall, I am really happy with this bike. It's fast, it's smooth, it shifts well, and it offers a lot of versatility and performance. I'm looking forward to putting on some bike packing gear and some packs, some weight, and go camping with it with some overnight trips, perhaps on a weekend, perhaps doing a trail of some kind, and maybe bringing along Hannah as well. And that's kind of why I got them, but you'll have to subscribe for that if you want to see those future videos. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like. And if you have any questions, I will answer them down in the comments below. I will respond to any comments or any questions that you might have about this bike. And yeah, I really appreciate your support. 
Like I mentioned before, please subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. It really helps the channel grow and helps me to make more and better videos. And yeah, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.